Barron's reporter Nicholas Jasinski wrote the story, and he joins the panel. Nick, it's your red carpet debut, debut on the Barron's Roundtable. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> hey, so, Jack. Thanks so much for having me on. Great <laughs> to see all of you. It's been clear for some time that streaming was eating Hollywood, but this weekend we're getting that confirmation on the red carpet. Netflix scored 27 Oscar nominations, more than any other studio. You're absolutely right, Jack. Netflix has more Oscar nominations than any other studio this year. Apple TV Plus and Amazon Studios have plenty of nominations themselves. And even a lot of the films that came from the traditional studios at Disney and Warner Brothers, those, those films were shown exclusively on their own streaming services or at the same time as they came out in movie theaters because of COVID and the fact that so many theaters have been closed. So streaming definitely has a presence at the Oscars this year. I mean, you can also just follow the money. The, the top 10 streaming companies are spending something like $130 billion on content this year. And viewers like you and me are voting with our dollars too. Cord cutting is accelerating. The box office might never recover to what it was before the pandemic. And the average American household subscribes to about four or five streaming services at once now. So I don't think you'll find many people in Hollywood arguing that the future of media is anything else other than streaming. We just saw a clip from uh, Don't Look Up. That was very funny. Uh, Wall Street is not laughing, however. Uh, Netflix shares are down 40 percent this year. None of those stocks are doing terribly well. Why not? The first problem is there are eight or nine different companies and services that are competing for those five seats at the table. And then unlike cable, where you get this bundle of 200 channels and you're locked into a long-term contract, with streaming services, you can pick and choose and you can subscribe or cancel month to month. So in order to build these, the, the gold star, these recurring revenue subscription businesses, the streaming companies are realizing that they need to have new content coming out every month to keep viewers subscribing. And that means a lot of content, which is expensive. So on Wall Street, there's a lot more, I'll call it critical skepticism on when it comes to the profitability of the streaming business. So we have Netflix, we have Amazon, we have Apple. They're the pure tech companies. Who has the advantage there? Uh, well, Netflix is way ahead of the pack. There, I think there's no other way to put it. It's, it's the first mover. They basically created the streaming business as we know it. It has global scale, over 220 million subscribers, and very deep pockets to spend on content. Netflix is actually going to make money from streaming this year. It's the only one in the business doing that. They're going to generate free cash flow. Management has begun to buy back shares. And we're, we're bullish on the stock over the long term. Um, Amazon was also early to streaming, and it has the advantage of just bundling that service in with its Prime subscription. You mentioned Apple. Apple TV Plus, it's, it's much further behind. There's just not that much content on there right now. The strategy is a little confusing to me. There's some TV and movies, some kids content. Now there's going to be live baseball as well. Um, but like with Amazon, the service is it's a tiny part of a massive technology company. Hey, Nick, Jack Howe, uh, you like Netflix and Amazon. You say there are five seats at the table. Tell me your next two favorites. Don't say BritBox, only Carlton watches that. Talk to me about Disney, HBO Max, Paramount Plus, and Peacock. Yeah, Jack, I think like you, you, me, and Carlton, we only wish that there were more hours in the day so that we could watch all the content and all these services. <laughs> um, among, the, among the old guard, we think Disney certainly is a winner. It's got a super strong start in streaming over the course of the pandemic. Now there are over 200 million subscribers combined on Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, which are their three services. And it's just, it's such a deep library and collection of franchises and IP that are really, they're, they're globally relevant. Um, another name I'll give you, Warner Brothers, which is right now, it's owned by AT&T, but next month it's going to be spun out and merged with Discovery. So that's going to unite HBO Max and Discovery Plus streaming services, which together have around 100 million subscribers combined. Um, you mentioned Paramount. <laughs> NBC, um, which is owned by Comcast. They're similarly targeting tens of millions of subscribers around the world in a few years and spending billions of dollars on content annually to make that happen. But at the end of the day, they might just be competing for fifth place. Unfortunately, Nick, uh, we are out of time. Thank you for all those insights. Really interesting stuff. And of course, we'll be watching to see who wins on Sunday night.